Let's have a game. Let's maybe just a get map. a bit. Maybe a map. Oh, let's just see a few rounds. <laughs> So right. much on the line here, ladies, gentlemen, everyone at home. The winner will be securing their spot at the PGL CS2 Major Copenhagen, the first Counter-Strike 2 Major. And to carry us through the cast, we've got two of the best. Anders and Henry, over to you. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, fuck all your seatbelts. The Donk Express is leaving the station, and trust me, this is a ride you don't want to miss. Team Spirit taking on Mouse. Both these teams, Anders, are two and zero. This best of three will lead them to the Copenhagen Major. I can't wait for it, Henry. I'm ready to get into it, and we're going to start on Vertigo as well. It's Mouse starting on the T side. It's Team Spirit on the CT side, and let's see what Mouse could do here. I think they need a strong start. Spirit have looked like the absolute dominant force in Counter-Strike for a bit, and it's quite surprising. It's quite shocking. I think I'm just enjoying it along with everybody else here, and I do enjoy this mid-push that's coming out, a potential B-split on the cards. Great map pick here for Mouse. Donk will be playing that B-bomb side. It's not a high-fragging position. You can somewhat stifle his play if that's possible, Anders. And we'll see him be challenged here. B-split is coming in. Molotov deployed. First frag about to be delivered. When it's Donk going down. The flash didn't even do that much. It kind of landed behind it with Sue. Instead, this one, a headshot on Magus. And that's pretty good. Three versus five. Bomb about to be planted. Spirit. A retake right now. I don't know, they have a smoke in a kit, so if they can find, I think, a kill and, a, and then putting the smoke on top of the bomb, that's usually how you try and win this round. But look at where Mouse are. They're not falling really far back. They're staying close to the bomb. And I think with that kill from Toshi, it's probably done here. Should be impossible nearly at this stage. Jimmy coming up with a shot as well, leaving Shiro on his own. Actually, nice headshot as well. There we go, pretty clean from Mouse at the beginning. I think once they had the bomb down, I like the after plant positions. I think the only vulnerability there was the smoke and the defuse, and it never even got close. It never got close. Very clean from Mouse. Just what they needed. Putting their best foot forward here on their map pick. T-side pistol goes in their favor. It's Shui and Jim Fat doing the majority of the heavy lifting there. And it does beg the question, do we see the force buy from Team Spirit? Meta currently suggests that you do force buy on the CT side, and this is no different. We are going to see five sevens. An MP9 for Donk. Deagle for Chopper and Zontix. They do have a few smokes in the mix as well. No kits. A few players of our helmets, but the majority of Mouse have rifles here. First grenade lands. Not too much damage. Zontix will hold his ground. Yeah, they can spend some time. A couple of HEs there on the CT side that could make it a bit of an interesting round. The Deagle, maybe a little bit slow for Zontix. They're going to power their way through. The grenade lands. Kind of on Sue, but I think it's too late. They needed a bit more. They still have double nade, so we'll see if they can find the right timing. You could see Shiro coordinating. Magic's up there as well, so they're just waiting for the bomb to be planted. They're gonna bounce them off the wall. There we go, right on top. Oh my oh. god, that's two people waiting. Jimpack gets exploded before the bomb gets planted. That's pretty sick. Yeah, it's very good. Applying a lot of pressure now. Those smokes are gonna dissipate momentarily. No C4 planted. And all three members of Team Spirit lying in wait, ready to deny the bomb once again. Got to reset the round here. Another smoke deployed towards the A side. Shui lying in wait. Bit of breathing room with the smoke going down here. Brian to defend the plant as they attempt it once again. He'll cover it. Bomb being almost planted here. Good double kill for Brolan. It should secure the round. 25 seconds here. But Shiro, if you could have landed a bullet there, might have been able to take down the Swede. It could have been close. It was pretty close, to be fair, Anders. The fact that he got that denial of the plant. There were three CTs there. It was on a knife's edge, but well handled from Mouse. They convert the pistol. They go 2-0, fending off the force by of Team Spirit. Presumably means we've got a 3-0 situation here because there's no resources to really justify any significant investment. So maybe a couple of upgraded pistols. Yeah, we've got a P250, a Deagle, a single smoke. Very unlikely they can win the round, but maybe they can make it somewhat expensive for Mouse. Here we go then, round three, focusing towards A round once again. Nate down towards Xbox, we've got Shiro with a flash in hand. He's towards the sandbags right now, looking for a swing from short. Three players here, Anders, a flash will have to be pitch perfect. Yeah, the god flash is what they're waiting for, and I think, unfortunately, it's already not quite good enough. Also, the swing, I don't know, they went behind the curtains. I guess they could have found somebody there, but... At the end of the day, they're really going to get slaughtered in this particular round. Again, amazing news for Mouse. The 
underdog team in this one. So just uh, a bit of a hot start here. 3-0 oh in their favor. This time they don't lose too many people, or none at all, in fact. So they're going to be satisfied with that moving forward. Yeah, and the reason I say that this is a very nice mouse pick for mouse, um, map pick for mouse, is because that, uh, yeah, it was Astralis that didn't beat Spirit on his map, but it was tantalizingly close. It was very it was a, close. It was the first time that Donk has gone like negative on HLTV in like 20 maps or something. So uh, it does make sense here that B bomb side anchor as a rifler, it's not a star position and it's the idyllic star now for Mouse. 3 0 on the T side of Vertigo. Shiro bring out an early AWP here. Rifles otherwise, of course. No kits, just to note that, focusing. On the basic utility here, make sure they have smokes and some incendiary. Shiro behind the sandbags and Zontix very active towards the scaffolding area, trying to get some damage early if possible. Receiving a few bullets himself. And it is going to be Abram given over to Mouse here. Shiro's in a lot of trouble. Isolated with the AWP, needs some backup. Yeah, Chopper is there to try and help out, but they'll lose Zontix on the other side. The pressure is still on and they're going to pull the plug on the defense. Shiro sticking around just for one more kill. It's quite respectable, but this wide swing from Torshi. I think the Molotov might have slowed him down there, but there could have been a way that he could have got there. Grenade lands at the back of Shiro's head, and a brief duel. Magic's in the back. Actually, we'll swing into it. A bit of a slow peak, I've got to be honest there. Chopper will take down Brolin instead. Still a two on three, and 50 seconds on the clock here. They've got the right read, Spirit. They know what's coming next. Torshi and Jim Fab, with no utility between them. AK for the AWP. Jim Fat would upgrade to the Galil. Jim Fat, of course, another young prodigy graduating from the academy scene. We're we'll looking to have a dazzling performance just like Donk. Torji to strike first, but Jimmy will actually find the neutralizing frag. Two versus two now. Torji exposed, and Shiro, he'll find his second of the round. Comes down to the 1v1 in the end, but Spirit posts their first. Had to take a bit of bravery for Spirit or for Shiro at the end there to take that peak because he was very low on health. I think he had 37 health, even against the Galil. That's, he was uh, in a precarious spot most of the round there. Yeah. Su surprise he actually survived to the, the final kill, the final interaction, but he does deny the plant. There should be enough resources here for Mouse going forward considering that relatively clean start. Getting that 3-0 didn't drop too much. And yeah, they've even got a Natorji AWP going forward as well. It's going to be Team Spirit calling the early timeout because sure they won the round and is with one player surviving they're not going to get too much on top of it 32.50 per player so it's going to mean some concessions here that they'll have rifles sure but i'm assuming a couple of mp9s or maybe even the eagle have to come out yeah Drop up. like we said Shiro needed backup his captain escorts him to safety nails the all-important shot takes down torji I do feel like this is such a good map for Shiro to AWP on. There are so many passive angles you can he's, just He's hang more of out a defensive in. style, isn't he? Right? Yes, so he is. Definitely suits him. Get your frag, fall back to more defensive line, hit the shots that really matter. Nothing too flashy required. Speaking of flashy, though, Donk, he wants to get stuck in. He wants to show us his greatness. Shui, willing to challenge. Magics will be dropped, and here he comes. Donk with the first. Dinks the second as well. Solid behold. They've actually got the man advantage four on three. And you can see there's only a couple of players here on towards the A side of the map. It's Brolan patrolling towards middle. Zershun in great form recently. Taking matters into his own hands here. Starting to navigate up towards that A ramp. But Shiro, as said, always holding the defensive lines. Making sure he's playing those percentages, giving himself a fighting chance of nailing the shot, staying alive more importantly and run that clock down. Speaking of running the clock down, put up a smoke, and it slowed down Mouse significantly. Walking around with the A ramp. Unfortunately for them, I think middle is being discovered right now by Chopper. Yeah, look at him, he's in T-spawn walking through, so great bit of uh, information being pulled out here. They find Sontex in the smoke, it gets blown up. That's a really cool move from Exertion. Might give him a bit of a chance here. It's a grenade on Brolan. 
Only 30 seconds, and the flank is going to be coming in. So Shaba staying alive oh. here, but Donk, he goes down. Brolin finds him, and now the bomb's going to be planted. You can see Shiro, he'd love to try and stop it just to buy a little, a little bit more time, but because now they can look for the now they can look for the flank. They might even know it's coming. You could see them already checking it out. MP9 creeping up behind. Chopper, no one way. good kill. He gets another one, though. And it's just Toshi versus Shiro on the other side, and he can hide here all day behind the sandbags. A couple of more seconds, and Shiro's going to be in a lot of trouble. When he finds the kill, sends him off the side of the building, Henry. <laughs> Another 1v1 for Shiro Anders, but he's passing the test with flying colors each and every time. And bear in mind, he's playing that A bomb side as well. He makes sure he just stays alive as long as possible, posting the frags that really matter, taking his total up to seven and three. Decent effort there from Mouse Sports. They're on the back foot. They had a man disadvantage, four on three deficit. Yeah, Still so managed to get that bomb planted. Keep Team Spirit very modest. Modest, and it all started over here at B with Shui's entrance. And look at this. It's behind a spirit timeout, and Shui says, okay, you know what? Let's try and go contact free, like just contact to the B bomb site. Like no grenades, they didn't throw any flashes, any Molotovs. He's just walking up onto the B bomb site with the AK. So it's quite a bit of trickery, I would say, from, from Maus to try and do that right after a timeout. Very fortunate timing there for Chopper. Bit of a masterclass from the MP9. And you can see Mouse, it is worth buying up again, Anders, because they know oh, yeah. Team Spirit are breaking point. Sure, it's not the strongest spy, but it keeps coming down to these 1v1s. There's no money in reserve. They can break Team Spirit. It's a like double eco territory. So they're trying to make this one work, relying on the set piece grenades, jostling for control towards this A ramp, trying to remove that CT vision, but being blocked off right now. Zershan feeling brave. Chopper not at the A side right now, but for good reason, Brolan. Starting to investigate the mid area. Trying to cause some distraction here. See if there's any probing CTs he can find. I love the fact that Chopper went for that flank so early in the game because it's going to be in the back of Mouse's minds for a while. You have to worry about it all the time. He couldn't have passed it any better, right? The smoke was down. It was sick. At the sandbag position. He uses that to actually take down the third player. They had no idea it was even possible. Gets a double kill and sets up his star sniper for another 1v1, which he converts. No problem at all. Currently a five on five. Time is ticking very low, Anders. 40 seconds. Yeah. Still at the A round. They're going to have to finally execute here. Zontix with an unbelievably good smoke here. Allows him to focus his efforts towards the A ramp. And he might need him because Chopper and Zontix. Oh, they dropped down. Shiro alive still. Trying to deny that plan. God, Broland's done a lot of work opening up on this A bomb site. It's actually outrageous. He's up to seven kills, but I think almost all of them have been openings at the A site. Doubled up in the back. I don't think there are any nades left to really make that difficult, but maybe it doesn't matter. Donk showing up on the spot. He's getting a second kill of the round for himself. They do have a defuse kit on Donk, so they can put some pressure on this double sandbags position, but how will you check both players? Yeah, he knows one of them is there. Oh, he can't find the headshot, and time is running out on this round. Yeah, they have to try and just tap it now. You can hear the tick already there, sure, in one good kill, but they still don't quite know where Exertion is. All he needs is a little bit of a swing, and he oh. takes down Donk, and that should be the round no problem. Exertion to clean it up, and now all of the efforts really paying off. They kept the pressure on. The spirit economy is dead. They knew they'd break through eventually there, Anders, and a very important clutch coming in towards that sandbag position. The double stack, an old classic. Yeah. You don't see it coming. One HP grenade could have sabotaged their entire efforts there, but uh, very well played from Mouse, bringing it down to that two-on-two -two once again, and it is making it impossible to clutch out. They just didn't have the time to work with. And as mentioned, that will completely ruin the finances of Team Spirit now. They have to take an eco. They'll be able to buy up somewhat in the following round. They get $1,900 on top of their 2K. But yeah, it just means they can't really invest a damn thing. Mouse, an incredibly potent position now. Four to two. Almost certainly going to be five on the T side of Vertigo, no less. Yeah, couldn't ask for a better start, really. I love the Mac 10 here as well from, from Suri. Oh, know, it's yeah. perfect. The in-game leader's dream. It is. like <laughs> It's just become so popular, hasn't it? You're leading from the front. You get all the information. If you die, not a big deal, really. Because it's one of those around. weapons that just doesn't work on the CT side for some reason. So even if you give it over, it doesn't really yeah. give them that much. They're going to throw it away. They're not going to save it for a gun round. So it's just perfect weapon for the job in these sort of scenarios. Round's already over. Even in the five on four, you can see Team Spirit so far removed. Looking for some exits if possible. As I mentioned, they're already getting 1,900. Actually, it's 2,400 into the next. So the buy won't be terrible. Zontix could potentially bring out an orb, but uh, they might just be operating with... Five rifles this time. Not the most exciting finish here. 
trivia for me personally, Henry, but it's the first time I've ever cast on. Really? Yeah, because we were denied, remember, in Copenhagen. Like, he, he couldn't get the visa to I go. I was over a bet boom dodge. So... You got a chance I there. got a chance. I had a few chances. Yeah, that's what exciting. He's, that's when he started to unearth himself as this world-class talent. Showed he could do it on LAN. No shot connecting this time. Donk currently three and six. Like we said, he's not going to get that much action on this as the B-bomb side anchor. This is yeah. why it's such a genius map pick. Yeah, it's very tricky, and it's it's a, it's a, in one of these positions that requires a lot of cerebral counter strike. Because if yeah. you rotate out too quickly, if you fall, fall back too far into the middle, it's a massive, massive opening towards the B bomb side. It's always going to find that out, no question about it. So you want to so, be careful. We know it's going to be a compromised setup from Team Spirit. They'll take their second tactical timeout here. You can see there's going to be a weak chop about. If anything, he's he's sometimes better with that MP9. So yeah. might just be a blessing in disguise in many ways. M4s otherwise. We do have a couple of kits in the mix as well. Not too bad, all things considered, but you might see a change of stance for Team Spirit. Maybe they'll be a little bit more active towards the B side of the map. Two players facing that direction right now, maybe trying to work with that first pick. Get something going in their favor. As Magics and Donk set sail towards the B steps. Yes, indeed. Looking for a frag. Trying to alley oop Donk in towards the T spawn area. I like that. Oh, he takes a lot of damage, though. They know his moves, Anders. Yeah. They're very aware. And he still comes out on top. Can he survive? Not for long. And it will be Team Spirit trading out the kills. Donk does go down, but they've got the four on three advantage. HE Molotov combination. Nice kill for the smoke here for Surgeon, but they knew that he was there. Exactly. They had him pressure. Like, that was sick. He should, he should have been dead for nothing, but instead they trade favorably. Son ticks. A nice kill coming back in return. You know, obviously, I think Donk is sucking a lot of uh, oxygen out of the room, but Sontex, for me, has also just been a really delightful player to watch grow. Oh, he's, like, he's really sick. An amazing Counter-Strike player, no doubt about it. Very well-rounded, playing years above his experience. Oh, look at, yeah, speaking of which, look at him pushing forward, seeing the potential danger, but then being spread out to A, oh, sorry, to B1A, so instead he's going to start going on the flank, and this could be... Insane timing. I don't think Mouse are going to see this coming. Unless they get the kills instantly and they can focus on the flank, they're going to be preoccupied putting down the bomb and fighting these two players towards the middle of the map. And Sontix just stepping closer. Yeah, he's I mean, five seconds away from winning the round right here. Bomb not even going to get planted, but he was the insurance policy the whole way through. So really smart move from him. And Spirit finally with a round where they actually have some rifles. Yeah, it's true. They knew they had to be a little bit more active there. Working towards the beat steps, a combative stance, as mentioned. Uh, but like we saw, Mouse are aware of those different little set pieces there from Team Spirit. They even had significant damage with the incendiary and the uh, HE double down towards the B steps. But Donk still came out on top, of course. And it was Magix to find a securing frag, which found them their third round in the end. Five to three, first tactical timeout from Mouse. As their finances come under scrutiny now. Looking like a pretty decent buy overall. AK's across the board thus far. Torji could bring out the AWP, which he will. Sacrificing a helmet by the looks of things. Oh, actually, sells it, Anders. That is a feature of CS2. Gets his refund. Goes for the AK-47 instead. Okay. Suggests they're going for uh, a spawn strat here. Maybe going for a B set piece. They've tried it before, both with and without grenades. So... There are a lot of great Molotovs that can be thrown over at that B-bomb side, but for now at least, they just want to show themselves at the A-ramp. It's not uncommon, even if you're going B, that you want to do this, but my god, the flashes go deep, don't they? Shiro, okay. rushing down there. Throwing the kids in sync in there now. A couple of aggressive maneuvers deployed by Team Spirit back to back. Previous round is the B-steps this time. Shiro flung towards the bottom of the ramp and finds the opening kill. Zontex wants to slice of the action as well. His teammate will go down, but they'll maintain the advantage. Four and three. Fantastic work from Zontex. Barely takes any damage in that excursion. Oh. Upgrades to the AK-47. Now they've got a four on two, and he wants more. It will cost him his life. Brolan, excellent shot. I thought he was going to be dead. Peeking the AK with an MP9 in that range, I feel like he should have gone down. I think he's just feeling so fired up right now. That's why he went even for the third fight once he picked it the AK. It was audacious. They didn't hate it, but uh, it might end up costing them the round here. Chopper playing very well thus far. Seven kills to his name. Spots Brolan here. He'll deploy the default smoke. He's got another one in his feet as well. Can extend it. Get it on the right-hand side. You can see that's excellent work. That's going to keep them entertained. 
at least 15 seconds. How yeah, they find the way out of this one. No delay setting up that double smoke. That's pretty good handiwork for him. Jim Fats on the other side. He's going to set up a couple of grenades of his own. I think towards those mid boxes, trying to see if he can cause a bit of a distraction. Magic's still in the back, and Broland's moving in. 17 seconds. Ooh, could he go straight for the bomb plant? He just fell off. The Molotov is going to be on top, but the bomb will be planted. If he'd stuck around, okay, maybe it won't even matter. What a spray. Mid air catching the head of Broland and leaving Jim Fan in a one versus three. It's a very hard one to win. He won't get the first headshot, but Donk will show up and take him down. So, Spirit, again, losing quite a bit and allowing for Mouse to get the bomb planted. So, I don't know. I don't, they could go for like a half by here, but beyond that, probably going to be quite tricky. Like this from Team Spirit. Got a varied strat book. A mixture of very defensive, conservative A play. We've seen the B push. The A excursion with Shiro, the tip of the spear. A lot of pressure being applied. Mouse this time fumble. The bomb gets planted, but still the loss bonus won't help them out too much. It looks to be a partial investment. If you could even call it that, Anders, I'd say this is more eco territory. You can see just a couple of sets of Kevlar. Jordi plays on Tech Nines here. Yeah. And a bit of a mid-rush. Some nice flashes to find a bit of positional control. And the first frag will fall against and they do significant damage towards Magics, but no frag found. Chopper, wide swings in towards middle. <laughs> With brute force, he was ready for some challenges there. Gotta be careful here that you're not giving away any silly guns or rounds here if you're Spirit. Taking a lot of damage on Magic, so just keep him out of the mix for a minute. And I think they managed to slow the round down enough that they can start to have a bit of a conversation about what's going on. Felt like there was a lot of movement from the CT side in the middle. I wasn't really enjoying that. Like, it looks fun, but it's also how you lose track of what's going on, I feel like. So just go back to these positions. You've got the grenades. You can yeah. slow this down. And unfortunately, that's pretty much all Mouse had. With yeah. those flashes towards middle, hopefully get a couple of trades, pick up a rifle, see whether you can see one of your stars can shine brighter than ever. Didn't work out. Did some damage, sure. But as you mentioned, the CTs, well aware they're up against Nico at this point. No one needs to give their life up for nothing. Keep delaying them with utility. Chip away with those lovely HG grenades that continue to do so much work for them. And Chopper, we said he wanted to get stuck here. Now, there's his chance to sink his fangs into the mouse. And Shira to close things out. Maybe a second kill here for Shorty because they're so low, but yeah, they do so much damage, but only find one single kill. Yeah, a little bit disappointing in that sense. It would have been fun for them to, to try and see if they could have more of an impact, but not going to be possible. The game is tied up. Tactical timeout being called now for Mouse. I could kind of understand why. Spirit are starting to wake up a little bit here on the CT side. Mouse would love to get the last two rounds in here. Find a way. So what's the next play? Took the Eco in the previous round, enables them to have a full setup now. I haven't been relying on that towards you up on the T side. It's more of a CT sided affair for the AWPers. I feel like they're running into kind of a classic uh, problem here on this map. If you can't take control of the B stairs and you can't win the fight at the A ramp, then there's not many options left at a point in time if you're on the T side. So see if, uh, if Sue has uh, something up his sleeve to try and get them a little bit more control. Time will tell, Anders. Starting to shrink here somewhat after being up 5-2. to two. Spirits with three rounds in a row. Their finances should be secure for the rest of this half as well. We are going to see Donk once again challenging towards his B steps, but the flashbang from Shui is absolutely spot on. I caught it from his POV. He couldn't have been blinder if they tried. Opening frag. What a scout to take. Zontix answering back at this A round. Neutralizes it back down to a four and four. Torji will be waiting there. Receives a grenade at his front door. A lot of grenades being deployed across the map right now. Where did Mouse want to finish here? They know the B bomb cell will be weaker with the final boss of Counter-Strike removed. Chewie will hold positional control of the B steps. Joined by Jimmy as well. A young star in his own right. And it does look like they're gonna go grab the bomb and maybe... They double flashed him, didn't they? They had one coming through the window on top of the stairs and one straight up through the arch here. That's pretty sick. So I think we're just going to see a, a classic B execution, Anders. One towards middle, three here. So left and right of the generators. Molotov towards default and quad. Magix will have his work cut out for him here, but they have got two players on bomb site. Four and four still. Yeah, but one of them in one of the most Molotov positions on the map right here. 
behind the back beam. Magics, no one's actually looking for him. It's not Molotov this time. That's rare. I feel like that almost always happens on this map if the T's are coming in. And now he's just buying time. Oh, the swing comes out. He takes down Torshi. We're down to 30 seconds. And this round has fallen apart for Mouse quicker than they'd like. They had the entry. They took down Donk outside of the B-bomb side. And still, somehow, it's not quite enough here. Brolan i to try and finish the round on his own. He knows that someone's back. He wish, please, come fight me. All right, he's going to get him out the hard way. Molotov into nice. another kill. A one versus three turned into a one versus one for the Swede as he swings for it. Ten seconds left on the clock. And it's Shiro on the other side, hiding inside of the smoke. Brolan, he has to go for the full-on plant right here. Brave as you like, trying to punch in the digits. And he swings wide. Oh. He gets the shot. Brolan, what a clutch. He's done so well there, Anders. It looked like he was done for there, but it's the incendiary that saves the day. Magics are playing it so well, denying him any opportunity to take him down. Picks up the incendiary from a fallen CT, flushes him out, and then the smoke is still down towards Generator, allowing him to actually get the bomb planted. Shira was just praying he was going for the fake, but no. Brolan holds on. Post mouse, their sixth round here. As we get into the final round of the first half. Team Spirit. A weakened setup here, more than willing to challenge this B-bomb side once again. Donk wants revenge. Oh, no question he does. He's been very active this side of the map. Torji ready for it. And Donk goes down at the start of the round once again. Finishes the half, five kills, nine deaths. They will trade things out and have to actually have the HP advantage with Torji dinked in the process. Oh. oh, they didn't see the gap in the smoke, Magics. Hoping That's... he can sneak away. Yeah, that's something you have to know, right? Especially if you're playing that stairwell position a lot. The smoke just a little bit deeper towards the CT side. It leaves a little bit of a gap. And he's down and out. Mouse really close now to getting that seventh round. That would be quite great. That would be putting him in a position to maybe steal the map away. And they're taking their time. We still have 55 seconds on the clock, so... They don't feel the pressure just yet. There's nobody flanking down below on the CT side. They're all stretched out on the upper part of the map. One A, one middle, one B. Sontix with an MP9, no less, to try and hold on to it. He's just put down the smoke, but I think they're already past it. They're not really going to care about that smoke too much, so maybe a little bit wasted, a little bit too late on this one. Sontix getting flashed in, swinging wide. He does get the dink onto Brolan, so that's a bit of a start here. 25 seconds and two people left. There's a slither of hope here for Chopper, considering Torji and Brolan at such low HP. Bomb will go down. In-game leader will have to wait for his star sniper to arrive at the scene of the crime, but he takes a bullet to the chest. As they initiate the retake of the final round of the half here, they've got to go for it. No kit available, and Anders, I'm going to start simmering down here. I just don't think there's a chance. Yeah. There's no way in. I agree. You can kind of tell as well if they had some sort of utility, maybe be doable here, but even a couple of kills here at the end, it's not going to make a big difference. I don't know if there's a kid on the ground, but they'd have to run and pick it up before they can attempt the defuse. They're not going to get 10 seconds in right now. So, yeah, a couple of kills here or there. Almost a shot. But even with that one, you don't have 10 seconds in the round any longer. So, yeah. it's all just for sure to try and get a couple of extra. It's seven on the board for Mouse in the first half. That's really well done. There were so many variables there going against Team Spirit. Low HP, no kids, man disadvantage, running out of time. And uh, yeah, Chopper with just a P250. Some lovely shots there. Spectacular shots, in fact, from Shiro. If he hits the third and they had the kit, a lot of ifs and buts there, maybe they can win it. But you're dead on. There was almost no chance. But speaking of which, Mouse might have a chance of taking a map from Spirit here. They actually finished on their T-side campaign with seven under their belt. Donk was silenced. He did not have a good half. Yeah, and, and I think you pointed it out right at the start. It is kind of a, there are some maps where being the B anchor is just this is what the experience is. Mirage it's has not a, a star feel position, sometimes. right? And yeah. he was going down more. He was at like the the start of the fight, pushing on his B steps. They're trying to set him up, but I think Mouse have got some very good protocols. They know exactly what he's up to, his maneuvers, and how he likes to find kills in this map. And they're trading him out at least. He'll find one kill, sure, but they always trade him out. I don't think he's had many multi frag rounds in this particular half, but it's neither here nor there. We're gonna switch things over. We've got seven guns on the CT side here for Maus. Jewel Barrett is in the hands of Zershin and Torji. Don't have a kit. No kit, no, seven pistols. No Zeus either. And no Zeus. What is going on? Where's the Zeus at? I don't know, it does flavor up the rounds a little bit, doesn't it? 
I do like the flashbang on Brolin, so that's that's something to think about. Oh, the nade. Shuey, yeah. you're about to get wrecked, my friend. He had no Kevlar as well, Anders. It's a player to drop the jewelies. And now this is more like it. Team Spirit. Raw into action here. And it's going to be the bomb planted. A couple of frags in their favor. A double HE towards the sandbag. Nets in that opening kill. This is still somewhat possible. They've got a flash for the retake here, but I can't see a world if this falls apart for Spirit. Yeah, and I think the flash touched nobody. It was meant to try and get them off the smoke. Oh, I can't believe it. Team Fan actually right. somehow able to get that shot off. But again, the fact they don't have the kit, it just means the pressure is on so much. They can't really weigh down and take long fights for any headshots, and they're going to get overwhelmed at the end. A necessary pistol round being won from Spirit will set them up pretty nicely. Well played. You can see they've uh, done their homework too. Beautiful pistol around there. As soon as you get that kill, you know all bets are off. They're going to be surprised, scrambling back towards the A site. You've already deployed your smokes. Found a couple of opening kills, and that bomb's down. They gave it a good attempt. Don't get me wrong, but Mouse Sports just had no world in which they could win that particular round. Magic's to open things up, and Donk with a nice shot there towards short. And Shiro has been very good throughout this Vertigo campaign. And yeah, I'd say after a pretty ropey first half on their CT side, that's a nice pistol for Spirit to pick up here. It's going to force out the full eco for a mouse. But they've actually got some decent territory, Anders, and T-Spawn already. Problem is, you can't really get down quickly unless you make noise. You have to walk around like they are. Ooh. You see on your screens, and I think this maybe gets them a kill. So there it is. He gets found laser down by the USPs. Now, it is just the Mac 10 that they lose, and they're going to get the bomb plans at the bomb site. So, all things considered, this should be fine. I don't think Spirit are going to be losing this round. But it's nice, you know, apply a little bit of pressure. They've even stolen a uh, Molotov. You could, if you wanted to, you could try and save the Mac 10 and the Molotov. But yeah, the round definitely not going to be working out here. I think they want to try and apply a bit more damage. Be a lot more interesting round here if they actually somehow had a defuse kit, but there's no reason why they would. Okay. <laughs> Slaughter at the end. It's tied up. Yeah, not that interesting of a finish. Can't make, can't make it more interesting. <laughs> um, we are at 7-7, seven, seven, though. An interesting scoreline for sure. Mouse Sports are in this one. I don't think many people thought they'd be able to top all the likes of Spirit today. But they certainly are a team that's capable and they've seemed to have caught Team Spirit on somewhat of an off day. They're not completely igniting the server on fire thus far. It's early days in the best of three. Bear in mind, this one's for the major this series. It's the opening map of Vertigo, picked by Mouse. They can win today. That means they've guaranteed the major yes. itself in Copenhagen after two days of play, and it's not too bad. Really good investment of time, no question. Can they do it, though? Jimmy, also one of the absolute stars on the server, Aggressive down with Zershan. It's got to be advantage for them as well. Zontix is looking up at the wooden boards. Double kill. Now Sports, if they can get away with this one, that's an early five on three. No questions asked. No damage received. And they don't get away scoff free. Brolan, he'll be found in response. Chopper, such a nuisance with those SMGs each and every round. Still massive advantage for Mouse Sports, but he does give them a fighting chance here. One minute five on the clock. Chopper and a Mac 10, just the most iconic duo for that weapon, I think. The original herald of the jumping SMG back in the Vega Squadron days. That's a good point, yeah. Way ahead of his time. Everyone was laughing, saying he's playing funky Counter Strike. Like, why is he jumping with a Mac 10? It's ridiculous, but it wasn't. Just yeah. he was just five years ahead of everybody else. Chopper walks, the so boomage could run. That's exactly right. 35 seconds here. Started to run the clock down a little bit low, and also the health is a problem here. Shiro has the bomb. I don't know if that's worth throwing it over to Magix at one point just to try and make sure they can actually get the bomb planted if they even get close to the side at this point in time. 22 seconds. Elevated position for Shui, but can he look over the smoke? He does see one person, and it's the high health player in Magix that's gone down. <laughs> they absolutely this. get the ruined. The firing squadron at the back here, like, is ready to mow them down. There's only eight seconds remaining. I don't think there's anything that can be done. Shiro, done for. Damn. Four people alive. Yeah, it's a very promising round. And bear in mind, we only have one timeout, I believe, a team spirit here. That money's been thrown into a problematic point, and they are going to call for the timeout. So it's that third. And they do have a buy available. There'll just be a couple of players that are down to Tech Nines or Galils. 
But uh, yeah, this is now we're entering the danger zone for Team Spirit. This is where things could actually spiral out of control. No bomb planted in the previous round. Nice to win the pistol, but a pretty convincing first gun round here. It's round number three, so a bit of a, a bonus round, I suppose. You entered that round with Galils and MAC-10s. You will at least have AK-47s. At least I hope we can see one purchased already. A couple of Galils in the mix as well, and a single Tech-9. Okay. That could be a dangerous round. Well, this is like set-piece sort of territory right now. This is where you want to be deploying everything you've got, get some basic control, whether it's towards B steps or pushing the back of the air ramp. Maybe even like a, a mid split here would be welcomed, but they are going to send three players across the bridge right now, just deploying their initial utility. Don't have to commit off this one. Just need to suggest as presence behind these smokes. Don't let the CTs rotate for too much information. Ronan sitting on the edge of the flames here. Well, let's exchange once again for these smokes. He'll take a few in the knees and a 56 HP. They are going to rotate somewhat off this one. Oh, you can see, this is what Vertigo is all about. Locking them out of the scaffolding position. Don't let them up near the sandbag. And Brolan is holding his territory. Not going down about a fight. Oh. Oh. Nicely done, but the return might be even better there for Torshi. Instantly extinguishes Donk before he can even really catch fire. You see how every fight there is set up with a flash or a smoke or a grenade. There's always some kind of utility as both the CTs and the Ts swing for another battle. They're just always trying to exchange those grenades to set up another kill. Torji, speaking of kills, he wants a couple more. And the first. Exertion. Up close and personal towards the wooden boards, boards of the B bomb site. We still have execution potential for Team Spirit. They have the smokes. Molotovs as well to push back the CTs towards short. Oh, Grenade lands a headshot. That actually could do some significant damage. Not quite. Torji in a defensive position. Okay, there is a beam flank coming down below. I think Exertion is pushing out, but he's a little bit late potentially. That might actually give them the time that they needed. Important kill. Magic's going down to Sue. And now we're down to 10 seconds here. They're still focused on planting the bombs, so no one's looking for the flank just yet. Oh, I think they missed each other. I don't think he realized he was <laughs> a tenth of a second off, Henry, I yeah. think. Otherwise, he would have spotted it and sure would have had a real chance of doing it. But now, they're locked in like fish in a barrel here. I do oh, they're trying to find a way out. Chopper, unbelievable. Oh! He has one more chop. Chop, chopping it up, Henry. That's unreal from the in-game leader. Just when he needed him to strike harder than ever. It's the Galil in hand and a desperate scenario the money was low. It looked like they were outflanked, outmaneuvered. The retake was going so well for Mouse, but he hits absolutely every single shot with the rifle here. The old veteran stepping up here. Look at him go. A one versus one with Shui. It's a poetic finish. Just what they needed. We go 8-8, eight, eight, and it's going to have to be a full oh. investment from Mouse here. They'll limp in with MP9s for masses. Almost no utility whatsoever. One smoke has now been deployed, and they've got zero grenades on the CT side at 1 minute 40. Oh, look at Exertion. Yeah, because of the lack of grenades, just like you pointed out, he feels the pressure. He knows he has to try and manufacture a round out of it because they can't slow them down with the utility. And he gave his life for that one. I'm still not over it. I can't. They were locked in. It was a four versus two. Yeah. They were completely surrounded at the A bomb site. Getting flanked, losing a Shiro out there, and then they should have lost that round every single time. I have no idea how Chopper managed to do it. But it's not done go. yet. They're fighting their way back. Donk is out of the round. Brolin with another double. He's had a magnificent oh. game so far, and it's another flank. This time, Sue, the one to pick it up. <laughs> it's just nothing they could do. Shiro gets taken down. Mouse, they just shake off that last round, and it was nothing. Oh, man. Team Spirit, you're up against no grenades, and you've maybe... Been a little overzealous with that one. They didn't really bleed them out. They didn't make them work for it. They got the opening kill as well towards ladder. Tried to force the issue towards the A site and it all collapses around them. That was such a significant round as well. Mouse can't believe their luck. They've upgraded to AK-47s on Torji and Jimfa here. Mighty starting to get to a promising position. Anything but the team spirit as they might as be rushing B here with two players at the very least establishing control. Flashing Jimfa off the initial stairs position. And what do they have left over for their final play? A single Molotov, one smoke, and they've lost a ramp completely. Brolan, this is fantastic. Territorial control. He continues to push as well. Tucks himself in. 
And now they can rotate players yeah. over, Anders. This is huge. This might be round defining. Yeah, I mean, this is Counter-Strike textbook, isn't it? It's yeah. what you want to do. Get a forward position like this, allow for the rest of the team to rotate around it. Even worse, Spirit don't know this is happening. If they at least knew that Brolin was this far up, they could make some different choices. But in their minds, they're being super sneaky. They're like, oh, we're going to go split the B-bomb side. They'll never figure it out. But they absolutely know. Sertion, even in spite of that pushing forward, flashed in to get the kill on Chopper. Oh, Mouse, they're taking some big steps towards winning this map right now. Yeah, their preparation, their understanding of these key situations as well has been spot on. Brolan, with this magnificent maneuver. Nobody checks this, right? I mean, it's off commonly overlooked. You probably are checking it, though. Apparently not. And Brolan, oh my goodness, he's going to have the big spray down. Triple kill. There's the hat trick. It's round done. He would have loved the quad kill. The glory would have tasted so sweet. But this time, he'll just have to make do with the round victory, courtesy of the young Swede. He's 18 and 12. He's killing up. Talk about somebody who, at one point, described by Get Right, you don't get, you know, higher praise than that, as, sure. the, as the new thing in Sweden, the new next Swedish superstar. When he was, he was on Fnatic, that's what it looked like. And then his career, I would say, took a big dip. The fact that he's in Mouse now and playing consistently really well, like, I, I just... Definitely was not on my bingo card at all. Yeah. He, he's returned to fantastic form, having high impact, taking matters into his own hands. That, that's such a key maneuver there. That wins in the round against a force fire as well. And sure, they had pistols, but they were fully invested. Tech nines, helmets, grenades. And sure, he gets the three kills, but it was the positioning that wins in that round, allowing three CTs, defending that B bomb site. They could flash the living hell out of the B-Steps itself, managing to push them all around the map, and then, yeah, lovely sequence from Brolan. Torji wants to get stuck in now. It's against the, the full eco. Maybe they get a couple of frags here, but like Lambs to the slaughter tap, Torji will make light work of them. Don't keep them with a cheeky team kill in there as well. Not a huge deal, but uh, worth pointing out, I suppose. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. 11 to 8. Smiles are coming out from the mouse side of things. That's down to the feel. But this can really work out for them. This map pick has, has really, really broken spirit. I'm surprised. That's what we're excited for. It made a lot of sense. Astralis had them on the ropes. 13 to 11, Team Spirit won it, but it wasn't a clean performance. Donk didn't really pop off. But Shiro looking to save the day here in round number 20. Mouse one round away from map point on their pick. We're going to see Zershan. Also, looking pretty powerful here towards B. So get back into a more subdued venture of the A ramp this time. CT's not providing much in terms of resilience. We are going to see now the smoke deploy perfectly timed here. See, we'll call for the rotations and Torji can focus his efforts towards the A ramp itself. Did that smoke go too far? I feel like it might have landed a little bit further behind than he was expecting. I think he might have missed it. Regardless, oh, yeah. Oh, you're right, yeah. They're pushing way up in front. They see the opening. They think, all right, cool. If we could just walk past the smoke, we'll beat you by a good 16 seconds. So let's just go for it. Torshi, just before the flash came through, he just saw a shadow, a glimmer of a player on the other side, but he couldn't find the shot. So four versus five with the bomb planted, it's a bit of a nightmare. But this time, I think the flank is going to be so much more obvious. They, they are going to be looking for it. In fact, they already have a player in Sontex down below to spot. I think Mouse should save this round. I feel like it's very, very risky to go for this one. That will probably decide it. Zontix, nice headshot. And the money's pretty decent for Mouse. I don't think they'll go for it, but they're certainly going to try and apply some pressure, do some damage. So even if they try and save their guns in the corner here, they'll be low HP. And okay, now this is getting a little bit out of hand. You're not going to win the round here. You're going to lose your AKs as well, boys. What's this one? But I'm not so sure. I think they're just trying to make the round as expensive as possible. I'll tell you how many players go down with a blast. Uh, zero. So it wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, so they, they lost their AK-47. It's like, yeah, the money's strong. Don't get me wrong. But um, having two AKs on the CT defense, like, that is a, a blessing, Anders. He shouldn't be giving that up so so uh, readily. But there it is. It's a, a bizarre retake attempt well, for a mouse in a round that was definitely already over. I actually think this has some pretty big implications because I think the only way that Mouse lose this lead now is if they lose the economy, right? Yeah. That's how Spirit can get back on top. So I'm really... I. 
Was this huge buffer round as well? It was 11 8. Yes. And you had tons of money, sure, but like that just, that just didn't register well with me. I, I don't understand what they were going for there. Like, sure, you maybe take a few more players down with you, but is that worth it? Maybe not. They'll take a tactical pause and we do see them reinvest. It's a full buy. Yeah, no problem in that regard, but it'll be their last if we lose this one. It'll be double digits of spirit, and then knocking on the door, tying things up. We've got the orb in the hands of Torji. Someone else to really consider, because it's been a really quiet performance for Donk, right? But the longer this game goes on, the more the chance that he will reignite himself. And that, that would be really bad news for Mouse. You don't want to see that. We haven't even had like a real Donk round yet. We so haven't. I'm sure that's coming. And Mouse got to be thinking too, let's let's close this map before it gets crazy. Oh dear. There's a good couple of spray downs <laughs> away. Stepping up, the captain of the team and leading from the front. Yeah, he couldn't have timed that better. Little jiggle from the elevated position, just after they checked it. They line up, and it's a double kill. And specifically a plan for Spirit to get to the middle without telling anyone, right? No grenades thrown, they're just trying to sneak in there, trying to be real creepy with it, but didn't work out. Making a bit of a meal of this boost, but finally, Zontix on top. Not too much damage, it looked like more than it was. It's currently at 71 points of health, still more than willing to go in toe to toe. With the Spirit players remaining, there's only three of the Manders. They've got to commit to this beat bomb sign. Need opening frags now. Jimfa launches himself, and Shui secures the round. Really excellent play there. That's going to be map point for Mouse. A lot of pressure alleviated, and they managed to hold on to the majority of their weapons as well, bringing back the AKs into their favor. And it all started with a captain's performance towards middle. Early five versus three. Is that all she wrote for Vert to go? It would take three rounds in a row now for Team Spirit to take us to overtime. More than possible. But can they make the first step? It's going to be a Tech 9, Galil, a couple of AKs, and a Shiro AWP with almost no grenades to speak of. That is full send towards middle. Donk to lead the charge. Brute force has been the chosen strategy now. Shiro will be dropped. They have got some basic middle control, but Torji, he's got much more than that. The A ramp is under his remit. AWP looking potent in that position, fends them off the grenades as well as he retreats and maintains the advantage. Oh, this is looking brilliant right now. I was worried about the mouse economy, but that last round more than made up for it. They're going to be fine. Donk in the middle, lets them know he's in here. They don't have to really fight him though, as long as they make sure he doesn't slip past the net. They're going to be fine. Sontix, though, on the other hand, he's walking all the way onto the site. They realize way too late what's going Hello. on. My god, nobody was peeking at any point during the st towards the stairs there. Shuei trying to get back into it, but they're going to clean up this round. I think Toshi, again, it's not really worth it to try and go for this one. You're going to have a 12 to 10 lead still. The AWP is just such an expensive weapon that probably better to try and save it. Wow, well done. I this round was falling apart. Mouse was winning this round, but the naked walk up into the B-bomb site just caught them completely off guard. Goes without saying that's a must-win round for Team Spirit. They fight two for Nail. They lost the first pick as well, the Randers. Shiro went down with nothing. And that's pretty much the only frag that Mouse will get. Team Spirit back on their feet, starting to resuscitate this Vertigo affair. And that's going to be double digits as well, 12 to 10. Mouse. In terms of loss bonus, we'll be getting $1,400 into the next round. It's bottom of the barrel. Torji will save the AWP, but this is the all-important round. If they don't close it out here, we're pretty much guaranteed overtime. They'll only get $1,900 into round number 24, so this, this could be rough. We'll see what they can make of it. So they'll have a full buy here, no problem. But it's the next round that could be problematic. They need to try and end it right here, right now. Can't give this one up. No, they really can't. I can't even imagine the level of frustration. They worked so hard, Mouse, to get here. If they can't end it and it goes to overtime instead, you guarantee you Spirit are going to really start to and wake up when we get there. Like you mentioned, we haven't really had a donk moment yet. No. You know it's coming. Well, maybe sure it won't be is. this round. Mouse, one step closer to finding victory on Vertigo. It's a five on four once again in their favor. Zershan playing with Zershan as he gets the B-steps control. Chop up. Looking to pick up the pieces. He'll be joined by Shiro here. And they've got him dead to rights. So if they check this position, there's no yeah, way. That smoke, it completely fakes them, right? They think it's a smoke to block off the stairs. They're not thinking about some... Oh, they... There he is. Might not be thinking about it, but they get the shot anyway. Donk, we've been waiting for you, but he's going to get shot down, actually. There's Jim Fat on the other side. That was Donk looking to get revved up into the round. He wanted to keep fighting. 
Okay, he keeps getting silenced with just a single kill. He's going to finish. It's round on 13 kills, 18 deaths. Did pick up a frag on Zershan, but still looks like Mouse have got enough to work with here. They've got the double stack at the back of B. Oh. They have. Oh, gets a little bit too uncomfortable at the back there, but they've handled it well. Yeah, but they can wait it out and throw another Molotov. If, they, if they're really patient here, I like the real rotation coming out so they're not doubled up again, because if another Molotov lands, then nobody... They might have found an opening, Henry. They're starting to look a little bit scary, but Hello. Roland shows up. He runs out of bullets, pulls out the USP, and down to a one versus one. Shiro on the other side. Can he find the shot? He's got 17 seconds. He gave up a scoop. Misses it. Tech nines out. This one. This one's for the map. Shiro tries to get the square. He can't quite land the shot, and now he's run out of time. Five seconds left. He goes down. Torshi will take him, and Mouse will take the map. My, oh my, what a finish it is, Mouse. Just about getting it over the line here at Torji 1v1. That map had it all, apart from Donk. He didn't really get yeah. going whatsoever, Anders, but still a magnificent victory for Mouse, putting their best foot forward here in their campaign. To the